Hello there and welcome back. Today we talk about the Oxy Instrument 1. This has been my favorite sequencer since a while now. I think it's a versatile one. It offers you a lot of possibilities and uh, I will show you five uh, reason, I will tell you five reasons why I really love it. Uh, of course, uh, this really uh, is tied to my way of playing. Uh, what you just listened was a very simple composition. I just was just using one track for the melody and then the second track was in chord mode where I was using the other three voices of the performer. It's a great complement for synth like this one, especially because these are four voice and this has four tracks, so you can use it pretty simple and each one of these tracks will control one voice strip. But there's many other different ways you can interface uh, these two instruments and have a lot of more fun. So I will show you a few of them. Before going on, as usual, few ways to support me. You can subscribe, you can share this content, you can become a Patreon, where I think I'm gonna actually record the full track you listened before, mix it and make it a, a final track, or you can buy from the affiliate link down below. That said, let's talk about my five reasons. So, number one, the versatility. Uh, while it has four track, each one is configurable with a different sequencer uh, mode. So, just to show you, we can start selecting one track. Let's hold one. Uh, in this page, you is the loading page. So all of these button here, all of these pad um, are one different sequences, and you can use that in different way. Uh, I'll sh that's another reason I will talk about later why I love how this thing is structured. But let's load an empty one. Whenever you load an empty one, you have the, uh, the possibility to choose different type of sequencer. So you have mono, poly, and that's self-explanatory, right? Chord, multitrack, and stochastic, and matricial. Matricial is a new addition on the new firmware, and it's pretty interesting. I'll show you. So that allows you to have in one sequencer many different ways to experiment with music. Uh, I like... Mostly I use three of them, uh, mono, that is, let's load a mono sequence, like the one I was playing before. I'm getting some help from the LVX and the Vongo Ultra Shear, of course. So simply put, when you use a mono track, you will use the pad to put trigger and note. If you want to start from scratch, you select one and you can select the scale. In this case, let's go minor. And then you can just put your trigger down. So this is seen in other kind of sequencer. You can move, of course, up and down. And then to this you can add a few more twists. First things that I like to do usually is saving this on another pattern. So to do that you press the save button and you press another. Here it is. And now you can move in the two. And oh, I forgot to save also in there. Okay. Now I, now I have it both here and here. I like to do that because I can create um, the evolution of the same pattern so I can go back there and add more notes and that's how I like to use this thing so this is part of another reason that I really like and I'll tell you later but this is pretty simple and you can move up and down, you can change for each pattern the length, we just end. Super simple, but let's add something to make it more 
spicier. So in mono and also many other of the other type, you have some random performance stuff. Again, this is another thing why I really like. So the lot of randomization and generative possibilities. So this is reason two. One is the uh, different uh, kind of uh, sequencer, and this is the second one. I will show you other sequences after this. So on random performance, you have the trick probability that is act global. You have the probability of changing octave, plus and minus, it can go up and down. And also the change, change of velocity, randomization. It doesn't really work very well with the performer because the MIDI implementation of these guys is really minimal. So it's not the best. And then you have the retrigger function. So this is pretty cool to add randomization on a sequence that you just do. You can also, also, do that per step. So to do that, you go here, step chord, and then you press the pad, the pad you want, and here you can decide the trick probability. So it can be one every two, two over, two over, uh, second time over two. Like this is very similar to the probability trick you find in the electron boxes. Or you can do the per per percentage. So already starting from a simple pattern, we already get something that is a little more interesting. Oh, I like it already. Whenever you want to save these or copy, you just press this button and double tap, and now I saved it. And if I tap, tap in any other of these spaces, it will save there. So we just saw the first, the mono, and the uh, randomization on it. But let's just tour a second the other possibility. So right now I have the new, uh, that I think this is a premiere. I don't know if uh, Oxy are ready to um, talk about that, but they allow me to do it. So let's go on track three, where I put the new matricial. Uh, this is pretty, pretty amazing concept. So let me reset a second the sound and let's play. So right now, what happened here is like you see these as a four, four by four sequencing. Um, block so four by four so there's one block here two three and four let's start from scratch so i show you what actually this thing does so let's select a minor scale so you input first the notes the trigs actually and you actually have to you can select different um, MIDI channel for each of these things. So right now I'm triggering voice one. And so you have that thing, right? 16 step basically. Now on page two, you have the note. So you can input different notes just pressing. interesting part is that you can decouple all of these function from the basic 16 step and um, scale of it so if you press end here and you make it this shorter as you can hear the things will change because now the triggers are set on a 16 step basis while the note are set, are set on a 15 step basis and you can do that with note, with the interval, that's basically you can move note by interval. And let's end this here. Then you can do many other things like velocity. So you can modify the velocity, oct octave, retrieve, and probability and glide. 
So it's pretty interesting because not only you can do that, but for each of these things, you can put a different uh, scale length and that's make things, for example, now I change the division. And now I can add the other because I have four of them, so I can use this on second. I will put the offset in C3. And I mean, this is great to just create randomization. And let's add a different note. Not into a note. Now I had it. Uh, it is. Not a masterpiece, right? But I wanted to just to show this is the next, uh, the new sequencer that has been added. And it's pretty fun to experiment with. I just started, so bear with me. But let's see the other one that I really love before going to chord. So this is called the uh, multi track. Uh, basically, it makes the Oxy an eight track sequencer. So each line can be uh, can control a different MIDI channel. So right now, I have this track here that control, as I press this and the track, you see control channel one. So you control this guy again. And then this track, I am muted. It's track two. And this one is track three. Did I set track three? No, track three, track four. And then, of course, I have track four. So, the good things of this is like, with that, something like the performer, I can have two blocks. This one and another four tracks, so I can have at the same time many things happening. And one thing that I love sometimes is like setting up this and then turn on other tracks. Like for example, I know that track one is working with track with voice one. So if you superimpose the two, something will happen. Let's hear. Because the note will be stealing from each other, so the things can get more complex. Let's just create something from scratch because it's really fun with. So let's turn off that, let's go on track four, let's load a different pad. This is empty, so we have to set our scale. And now I'll set all the track. This one will be track one, track, uh, track two, track, no, sorry, uh, track three, and track four. So this works in my favorite way. It's the way that the octa track works. So you can put down um, pads, tricks, and then you hold it and you have changed note. the octatrack mostly when I uh, use the uh, Vermona and it because it can really um, it, it's a way for me to create instant melodies and stuff that really is fun and work really well uh, cool things of this uh, sequencer is like okay you can start add the other note now I added 
track two. Let's put different notes. Even in this case, you can decouple the thing. So let's say I want this strip to have a different length. I just press end. And now, as you can see, the playhead, the white dot is decoupled. Not only that, but if I go here in the track uh, menu, I can change division and offset. So, for example, now it's 1 16th, now we can go slower. So this, of course, makes things pretty interesting. Now I'm adding something on track 3. So this, I, I use it a lot, because I can create unexpected thing. Okay, that's about it for the first part, we'll get too long. Uh, there's other few uh, interesting things, and uh, we already see the uh, randomization. One thing that I didn't show you, that is the way you can randomize things. Let's go back, let's go back on track one. Let's pick uh, an empty pad. And let's play with randomization, genera the, the ge generation of uh, pattern. So let's select minor. And then you go in this page with the dice is. With shift is random generate, re generator. You just press the button and a pattern just is just born. There's a few possibilities here, the uh, humanization, the randomness, and the density. The more density is, the more note it will be. And this is a great way to actually start something. For example, something like this. And this could be something where you can start working. You can double click to save it and now you can expand and go somewhere else so it I, I really like sometimes to just press the randomization function function and get something unexpected and then work on it okay let me move to uh, the this page the actual loading page it seems like silly but to me uh, the way that the uh, oxy loads thing it's great it allows me to create um, full composition and it's amazing for live performances uh, also if you use it this can ro work really well with um, modular stuff it has 8 cv and 8 ga gate in the output in, in the back panel so I actually did my first and only modular uh, exhibition using this as a sequencer. And what I like to do, uh, it's like use this load button as a linear progression. So let's go back to the first things that I that we were listening. So I divided the, that thing in four 
successive uh, pattern here and then I was jumping to the last pattern here so what happened is like I know that I always know where uh, I am at the on which point I am of the composition this would be the start then I know I can load this that only had a few notes and then I can go here So it's a sort of a, it's similar to launching a clips on Ableton, right? And um, I always like to set up the machine having on the top line the more linear sequences, mostly made with mono, with the mono sequencer. And down here, I like to have my chords. Um, for chord, I have always to change uh, the machine. So I go in MIDI and select track 2 because this is control MIDI 2 so now when I trigger that this will be triggered I have to activate there it is I kept the sound part simple because I wanted just to talk about the oxy here I would probably had some more effects to make this more you know interesting so I have a few chord here and this is the second part so this is a fun way for me to move around and when you you have um, many project each project has 16 by 4 uh, pattern that you can load so quite a lot of stuff um, I think this for live performances uh, going in the load page and see all of your uh, patterns laid out here uh, even if I like to separate sometime with empty so I know that I can go here and, uh, and then it's gonna be silent it's it's very great for live performances i really really enjoy that okay that said let's go to the other things that i really love that we are just already listening and it's the chord function chord function is something not being a player a key player i really like the fact that the oxy has a huge bank of different chords so you select that and then you can go in the preview page uh, here it is. And here you have a few functions to play different chords. So basically it's quantized, so you have all the C chords here. And then here you have different inversion. You have different spread right now it's spread zero so it's just three notes but then it would play four five six seven eight uh, this is useless with the performer because it has only four voices and now i'm using just three but i'm assuring you if you use it with something like a deckard dream or actually to control some midi instrument on uh, your daw it's incredible and and then here on this other two row you have all the different kind of chords you can see here. And now Manuel added a second bank. So before we only just add a bank, now there's two. So you have a lot of way to play. One way could be, for example, to deactivate the chord that I already had, and we can load this. And then in preview, you can just play on top of it.
So, this is, could be another way to enjoy these things. You can have uh, things going on, sequences going on, and then you can play chord. Another fun thing about chord is that I loaded some, I prepared something here. I prepared this other uh, sequence. Let's turn it on. And whenever you have a chord set up, you can also, in other tracks, for example, now in track one, I select as a scale harmonic harmonization, harmonica, harmon, I don't know what is the full thing, but basically means that this track will listen to the chord happening on track two, and then will quantize the note to be in scale to the chord that are playing. It's a very cool function, and it really works well with the arpeggiator. So for example, as you can see, it changed the note that are in the scale automatically. So. can hold that's pretty fun and uh, this is this could be another way I can, you can perform you can set up the chord and then you can just play with the arpeggiator or why not you can just play notes the red one you shouldn't touch it like I just did was my fourth reason that I really like the Oxy. Let's talk about the last one. I don't have to play, thank God, for the last one. The last one is the fact that uh, Oxy Instrument uh, by now is a small company that really listened to the people that uh, bought it. Um, Manuel, that is the person that uh, uh, take care of all the programming, um, really is adding function over function. Uh, in the last few months, he had the, the stochastic uh, sequencer that is pretty fun. I'm not going to show that one, maybe for another video. He just had the, the matricial and literally every few weeks a new firmware come out with great new features. Um, there's a very active group uh, of owners and whenever uh, somebody is um, asking for something that actually makes sense uh, oxy always listen to that and they keep adding stuff making these things even more awesome so i feel that it is a great investment because it's a very capable machine but a new idea comes of course from the creators but also from the community and it's really rare that the company um, listen actively and if there's something that has to be corrected or something that has to be added, it will be done in the matter of days or hours sometimes. So it's pretty amazing. I have a great relationship with them and uh, I'm always chatting and, you know, try to find new ideas, new things that we can add. And yeah, it, it's, it's great to feel that a company really care uh, to make an instrument uh, for live performers and musicians. This kind of, the, the video of course went way longer than I thought, as usual, over 30 minutes, damn me. Uh, anyway, so I, I show off the thing. There's the last bonus thing that this is battery operated. The battery lasts a lot and it's very well made. It control, as I said, CV uh, and gate. Uh, it's super portable. Uh, it has a um, module uh, the oxy pipe 
uh, which with just one cable will be interfacing with your uh, modular system so you don't have to have cable coming out of this but you know it's all back here so i think that this is a great investment and it's a very fun instrument very capable beautiful also making metal it's, it's very solid so yeah just this wanted to be a love letter to oxy and to the oxy one i hope this was interesting and yeah i'll see you next week where i think since i'm on a roll i want to do another video of my five reasons why i love the performer since it's already here right i'll see you next week thanks for watching and bye bye